next. <laughs> Hello, children. Please take a seat, for your dear old grandfather has a story to tell. Since it's the winter season and the holidays are here, I'd like to share with you a magical story about a little girl named Cindy and the day she met the most special man of all, the toy maker. Now, if I recall this story correctly, it happened a very long time ago, back before even I was born. It was during an age that was not kind to the people. It was a time when all the world was at war. During this time, there lay a little village whose name time had forgotten. In this village slept a dreary little girl whose dreams were filled to the brim with food and sweets, together with friends sharing in love, laughter, and cheer. It was these things that she dreamed, for in her waking moments that is what she wished ever so much for. The village she lived in had been stricken by famine and cold. The war brought on much destruction and poverty to the people. Every day the villagers would line up to take their daily rations, but as each day passed, more and more bellies went unfilled. Young Cindy lived with her father and he alone. But because her father needed to work, the young miss had to spend the day all alone in her cold, damp, broken home. The children never liked Cindy. They made fun of her. There was one girl in particular who seemed to have it out for Cindy. The girl teased Cindy every chance she could. She would make fun of her for the silliest of things. Tessa was her name, the wicked child of Arthur Dawn, who once held status among the higher tiers of men. Before the war, their family held titles and owned land. Even still, amongst the poor, they clung to the tattered remains of what little status their namesake held. Tessa, the strawberry-haired heir of Mr. Dawn, was never a sweet girl. No, in fact, she was the sourest of sour that any one could be. From the day she met Cindy, all she could ever do is make fun and harass the poor little girl. She mocked Cindy for the shy way she talked. She threw dirt and rocks at her when no adult was around. She even made jokes about Cindy's mother, who had recently passed. No, Tessa was by far the rottenest child around. Cindy tried to pay her no mind. She ignored Tessa the best that she could, and would continue to play on her own. Though she longed for a friend, for someone to call her own, she had but one thing, an old wooden doll that had belonged to her mother. The doll was in rags, and had seen better days, but to Cindy she was the greatest thing of all. The doll had been named Anna, shortened from another name, and had been there for Cindy to comfort and to hold. For Anna did not make fun. She did not say hurtful words. No, Anna was the sweetest friend of all. But like all things wrong and dreary of this world, their friendship would not last. It was an especially cold and wet, nearly icy winter morning. All the town had gone to line up for food. The bread line was longest it had ever been before. Cindy stood with her father in the slow-moving line. The ragged breaths of the masses, steaming from all around, reminded her of the trains that used to visit their town. She remembered going to the station with her mother so many times before. The thought brought a smile to her face, and she giggled. She looked up to her father, who had a worried look on his face. Cindy tugged at his arm to share her thought. But it was in that moment that everything went wrong. The hush from the crowd broke into screams and panic. There was energy and excitement in the air. It frightened Cindy deeply. Her father ran forward, shoving people aside. Cindy screamed in terror, confused to what was occurring. The screams of the people getting louder and louder. Cindy was forced through some many bodies. Her father now, red in the face, screamed. He looked like a madman. Her father lost grip of her hand. She was left alone in a sea of bodies. She cried out for help and was pushed to the floor. She was nearly trampled, but one look from Anna and she knew what to do. Instantly she began looking for her father's shoes, soft brown leather boots that still looked brand new. It was the only thing he owned that wasn't worn or torn. She spotted his feet near the bread truck, 
so with all her might she ran past all the men and women, pushing through as best as she could. As she neared the front, she could hear men grunting. It sounded like two beasts fighting. Finally, she made it to the mouth of the group. There she stood, watching her father and another man struggle over a large loaf of moldy bread. The man was much bigger than her father. He stood a foot taller and had on what looked like a fur coat. The men struggled back and forth for some time. She looked at the, she looked at the now empty truck and frowned at the sight. The men fought over the very last loaf, it seemed. Cindy cried out to her father to tell him to stop, but he would not listen. She ran to him, but in that moment, someone grabbed her by the arm. She lurched forward, and from her hands flew little Anna into the scuffle. She landed right underneath the large man's feet. He stomped to the ground, crushing Anna under his heels, and fell to his back. Cindy's father had won, but at the cost of Anna's life. Cindy burst into tears, her face stinging from the wind. It would seem as though fate had smiled onto her family, yet cruel as the world is, fate's smile was for another purpose. The man raised up from his fall. He lumbered himself forward, and from his jacket he pulled forth a knife. He gazed deep into Cindy's eyes, with his dark green, devilish eyes, and buried his weapon deep into her father's spine. The whole world had stopped for the briefest of moments. Her father, who had succeeded in providing for his family, gave one last loving look at his daughter. The world can be so very cruel. Cindy blinked, and at last the world came flooding back into reality. Her father fell to the floor, the crowd now silent. The man with the dark green eyes pulled up from the mud, his prize, the last loaf of bread. He looked at Cindy gave her a wink and a grin, and walked off into the darkness. Cindy pulled away from the stranger and tried to shake her father awake, but she already knew that he was gone, his eyes cold and black, just like her mother's when she passed. Poor Cindy made her way over to her now-deceased friend. She picked up Anna and walked over to a tree. She held Anna tight for one last time and cried herself to sleep. Cindy woke up some time later, her father's jacket draped around her. She looked around to see that he no longer lay in the street. Where they had taken him, no one would say. The streets lay barren and icy. Cindy stood up, and as she did, she noticed that Anna had gone missing from her arms. She stood up in shock and frantically searched. She looked everywhere, around the tree, calling out her name. As Cindy searched, something caught her attention. Off in the distance, a familiar voice, one that sent her into a rage, had begun yelling insults to her. Tessa stood off in the fields, throwing something in the air, the other children laughing with her. Cindy began to walk over to the group, her face burning hot with rage. As she neared, she could hear Tessa's insults clearly. Neener, 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 your father's dead, and now I have your stupid doll. The kids laughed in unison. Cindy stopped dead in her tracks. Tessa had been tossing Anna's corpse up and down. Her heart ached. Something snapped inside of her. Cindy ran forward and tackled Tessa to the ground. Cindy screamed like a banshee, flailing her fists about, striking Tessa as hard as she could. The other kids gasped. Some ran to grab the adults. Others egged the children on. Tessa's screams only adding fuel to Cindy's rage. It felt like ages had passed. But a moment later, Tessa's father had pulled Cindy off. You little piece of... How dare you lay your hands on my daughter? Mr. Don screamed. He threw Cindy to the side. She hit the dirt much like Anna had. Cindy looked up and gazed at Tessa, her face a bloody pulp. Mr. Don ran over to Cindy. He raised his leg. The man looked as if he wanted to stomp her out. Cindy had no fear. She had no regret. In fact, she longed for the sweet embrace of death. Yet today would not be the day that young Cindy would leave this plane. For a man much older than Mr. Don ran over and stared him down. What is the meaning of all this commotion? said the older gentleman. Out of the way! This demon child deserves to be executed for her crimes against my daughter! shouted Mr. Don. How dare you, Andrew! The only person around here who deserves to be punished for their crimes is your family! After everything they did to lead us to this situation in the first place, no, don't speak. You listen. I know all about your dealings with the devil. 
You should be ashamed for what you have done. You and your whole family should be drawn and quartered. Now, if I may recall, your daughter deserves what she's gotten. Always teasing this young girl, making fun of her. She shares your sick sense of humor. Disrespecting the dead. Don't you know you're not supposed to speak ill of them? Have none of you no shame. All of you, turn around and leave. Now, I won't have this. Not here, not on this day. Is that understood? The crowd of men and women that had formed dispersed hurriedly. Oh, and Andrew, if you and yours don't stay in line, I'll make sure you're next on the list. Do I make myself clear? Mr. Don nodded his head, tears in his eyes. He grabbed his daughter, who still screamed in pain, and rushed off like a mouse running away from a cat. <clears throat> Are you all right, my little one? asked the old man. Cindy nodded her head. Good. Let's get you someplace warm, okay? The older gentleman offered his hand. Cindy, without pause, took it and held it tight. Oh, let's not forget little Anna.